Welcome back, financial forecasters. The market's all-time highs. I've been gone because I've been working stacking cash 60 hours a week so I can put some extra cash in my accounts so I know I can be buying these dips because something happened this week that is going to rattle markets coming into the next week and give you guys a good buying opportunity. It's gonna give me a good buying opportunity. So in this video, we're gonna go over what I'm gonna be buying, what I'm looking at. Guys, let's get rich together. Hit that like and subscribe if you had it. Hit that subscribe if you like the content and let's go getting rich together financial forecaster what am i stacking all this cash for you're about to find out let's get it all right first of all quick life update where have i been what have i been doing well, i've been double shifting 60 hours a week sometimes 12 hour days day on day on day they say don't be a slave to the man they say don't be an hourly wage slave but you know some of us we don't have the choice. We have the work in front of us and that's how we're getting our money. That's the most important part of taking your money you make from these hourly jobs and putting them to work so you don't have to do it for the rest of your life. But I can tell you right now, you sleep when you die. I've always been told that growing up and you know what? I'm putting it to practice. I'm working hard, putting myself through it, but opportunities awake. So if you guys haven't seen it, Janet Yellen, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, is signaling that we need to talk about the debt. Now, if you're a young guy like me, I'm in my 30s, we know that's been going on before. We know that every time debt is brought up with the debt ceiling, they have, there's this huge kerfuffle in Congress, the Senate, the news cycle talks about it for months on end, and then they raise the debt limit, the debt ceiling, and it's the same thing all over again. They push it further for a future generation. Now. Me, I love monetary, modern monetary theory, which pretty much says they can print out as much money as they want, inflation happens, but the government pretty much has a monopoly over money, and they can make it work. Now, just because I believe that doesn't mean it's true, and debt could definitely be something that could stifle the recovery trade coming into it, so we have to be very careful. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, because, you know, in the, in the long run, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, this doesn't really matter. We're still going to be here, hopefully, and we're going to keep putting into the stock market because unless the world blows up, the stock market's going to go up and up and up and up with dips and corrections along the way. So why am I so worried? I'm not so worried, but I am knowing, noticing the volatility. We've all seen the VIX spiking. We all know that the volatility has come back to the markets. A lot of people don't know if the recovery has legs to it and we're, everyone's getting a little bit nervous, but that doesn't mean there isn't things in the market to watch out for. To, to average down and if you already have a position to keep building that dividend portfolio if you want or to find these great big tech stocks that have run away with the market in the last 10 years. You know who they are and what are we buying? What's fairly valued, what's overvalued? So I'm gonna tell you some of the stocks that I've been looking at and that I am excited to start either increasing my position or starting a new position, honestly. I'm using my cash account now, so these are unfortunately gonna be taxable gains, but you know me. Financial forecast, we got a Warren Buffett approach here. We're not selling, we're buying good companies. We're gonna hold them forever. So let's get into it. These are the stocks that I'm looking for next week on any possible correction. First company, Canadian company. Now I had an option when I made my big RRSP purchase. Was I gonna go into TFII International, the, the, the trucking company, or was I gonna go into Magna, which is the car parts supplier? Now I was looking at both and I, I liked the growth and the opportunity of TFII, especially with the UPS uh, purchase they brought and they integrated into their business. So I ended up buying that and that's doing stellar. I'm up, up over 50%, it's fantastic. Now in the same breath, Magna, when I was looking at them was about $90, $95. I watched them run all the way to about 120 and now they're back down to about $100. Now, if this thing would start to dip back around that $95 range, which is only five or 6% lower than it is right now, the dividend isn't exactly the juiciest thing in the world. I believe if it goes to about $95, it'll be like a 1.3, 1.4% dividend, but the growth the company has, the cash flow, and going into the future, the car car parts, it's always gonna be in need of, it's always gonna be a thing. Used cars are skyrocketing and people are definitely going to tend to try to fix the cars they have instead of going out and buying a new car or going to buy a used car. So definitely Magna International, I'm gonna keep my eyes on it, do a little more due diligence in that, but I think it's a great blue chip, giant company, massive cap company that definitely has a place in a lot of people's portfolio as a stable, safe company. 
But again, gotta look at the balance sheet. Never buy something with a balance sheet. It's something I've been watching, but I'd love to buy more TFII, but can't right now. It's at $130. I bought it at $89. I think I'm very happy with a four to $5,000 position in that right now. Okay, next stock. Next stock is, man, any more REITs I can sink my, my teeth into. And I'm not going out and buying a new REIT. I wanna stick to, if you, if you start collecting REITs, that's fantastic, great yield. But you want those REITs because of the, they're eventually gonna cap out and we've seen it time after time after time. A lot of REITs will hit a cap and they will stay at it. Their market price will stay at it for years and years and years. So this is where the dividend becomes a lot more important and you're looking to stack that with a drip. You wanna be able to get your, a lot of eggs in one basket. So it's, it's buying that shares, it's taking advantage of that dividend. So if there ever is a growth in market cap because of all the acquisitions these companies have been doing since the, the pandemic has happened, that's what you want to do. I'm stacking Granite right now, Rio Can and CRT. If there is a dip, I have, I have a massive position already in Rio Can. My position in GRT, I'd like to make bigger. And you know what? The, the price hasn't moved that much. It's still very attractive. CRT, which has, has to be the safest looking stock with everything I've seen on the metrics, and I'm talking safest as in the growth isn't there, but the dividend safety is, then CRT is something I would be buying hand over fist. But guys, if you're not exposed to REITs, I have no idea what to tell you. A REIT is, is there to be in any kind of portfolio, especially in a tax advantaged ones. Get those dividends, get that yield, and you know they're still all playing that reopening trade. So REITs are great. REITs are great, so I'm still looking for more though. What's next? Now my growth plays. This has been a dagger in my heart as everyone who's playing their growth plays and picks the wrong one can attest to sometime it is painful. I've got my three big growth plays. I have TAT, which is starting to move on more cylinders. You see the, the exposure. They just had a, a podcast in Bloomberg this morning. They just won a Vegas composition, a competition for best in show. And we got Banksa. We have Banksa and the crypto volatility is still there. Bitcoin held above the 30,000 support and the volatility has come back. It's starting to rush and analysts are starting to get bullish again. We could be next heading into the next bullish cycle. So Banksa stands to benefit. I know Dominic Carosa was buying more shares on the open market. I know that they just added a few more exchanges to their platform and this all spells success. That is great. My last one, and a lot of guys out there, I know you guys are excited about this one, Kraken Robotics. Man, they bought their company, they issued a bunch of new shares, and it tanked the price again. Now, this is a long hold for me. I think my position now, after all the shrinking, is about $1,000 now. It is painful. What can I say? It's painful, but these long-term small cap stocks, they're going to be painful. I'm, my portfolio is up overall with every, with the market. I'm very happy with it, but these high growth plays, these speculative stocks, they're painful sometimes, but if you get them right, you're gonna get them right big. I never, ever, 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 unless you've been in the game for five, six, seven years, I will never recommend for you to start playing penny stocks or to take this much risk into your portfolio. Start with the blue chips, start with indexing, start with strong dividend payers, then move into this stuff where you're comfort, comfortable with the rest of your portfolio. And I will say that again and again and again. And if you don't follow that advice, it's your money to lose. It's not mine. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is your cash position. The market is at all-time highs. And it, this is all my opinion what's coming up. The market's at all-time highs. There's nothing to say it can't go... They can't go larger. The crazy thing is against bubbles, and I don't even know why people call them bubbles, because everybody knows what a bubble is. A bubble's gonna pop at any second. You see, a, you blow a bubble, you're just waiting for it to pop. Bubbles can last years, guys. Years. So this market keep keep going up. Or, on the other hand, the debt, or the, the variant, or something or other could cause a bubble to pop. And I don't know if we're in a bubble, but we're definitely due for a real correction. All of these 5% drops that happen and then the next day it's up 6%, these aren't real corrections, guys. These are just blips in the radar. If you can buy something on a correction and then you're making money the next day, it's not a real correction. I'm sorry, a correction is painful, and a correction just doesn't fix itself overnight. That's not the way the market works. And all these new investors are being spoiled rotten, me included. I am buying these dips like crazy. But please remember, if a real correction happens, 
be very careful. Don't panic sell, well, at least in my opinion, don't panic sell, especially if you're holding quality assets, okay? Inflation is running hot. Inflation is running super hot. So be careful right now. Make sure you have some inflation hedges in your portfolio. I've been buying a little more Bitcoin here and there, a little more Ethereum here or there. I'm happy with my position. Again, under 5%. I hate how every video I have to tell you guys, and it's the same strategy over and over and over again. But guys, stick to your strategy. You want to morph it here and there with as the market continues, but you don't want to be vastly changing your, your every, every week or every two weeks being like, oh, I'm going to go into dividends or I'm going to be going into growth stocks. You want to make sure your plan, your long-term plan stays the same. You don't want to be switching your ideals every single time. You're going to make a market move or you're going to lose a lot of money. Everyone should remember that index funds usually outperform everyone else. And if you think you're smarter than the market, you're not. All right? You're just not. And if you say you are, don't know what to tell you, but you're wrong. All right. So financial forecaster, guys, I've been working 60-hour weeks like a dog. It has been killing me, but I've stacked some cash. I've got about $7,000 on the line. Where am I going to put it? If anything changes, I'll let you guys know. But for right now, I'm letting those dividends come in. I'm watching my speculative positions. I am, I'm, I'm just seething for Tat to do something. I'm, I'm so excited. It seems like it's right on the precipice to do something. But until that happens, I'll be sleeping nice. I'll be calm. I'll be following my long-term plan. And I'll be getting rich as slowly and as profitably and as safely as I can. Just like I hope everybody watching out there is. Financial forecaster, guys, getting rich together. Hope you have a great day. Please hit a like. Have a great one. Bye.